What's up everyone? Welcome to my first manga collection video. I've tried filming this a few times, but each attempt gave me the ick. I started collecting manga in 2015 and have been collecting on and off ever since. Here's a picture of my first year of collecting. I think this was about six months in. As you can see, my collection has changed quite a bit. I don't have a lot of these series anymore, and most importantly, my collection has grown. A little disclaimer before we start, some of these series are 18 plus or have some triggering material within. Please do your own research on these manga if for some reason I convince you to read them. Anyways, let's just jump right into my manga collection video. Starting off with this TV stand shelf thing that I now use to house some manga and display my box sets. We have the Akira 35th anniversary box set. Akira is one of my favorite manga of all time and I'm so happy to have this beautiful set. It's definitely my favorite box set in terms of quality. I read the series a little over a year ago and I'm itching to reread it again soon. It's such an amazing experience. Next to that, I have my Claymore box set. Like a lot of you, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and whatever Toonami was airing on their anime block. But Claymore was the first anime I watched knowing it was an anime. Claymore is fantastic, but don't take the word of someone whose channel is literally named Yoma. But in all seriousness, read Claymore, it's great. You won't regret it, I promise. Then we have my Rosario Vampire box set. I'm currently reading through this, and so far, it's much better than the anime. For those who don't know what this is about, it's about this average guy who gets into a high school for monsters. The monster and supernatural components lead to some actual story development and progression later on. Moving on to my Sailor Moon box sets. Yes, box sets as in plural. You know Kadansha, very passionate about making box sets with their various parts and seasons. Sailor Moon is a classic, and if you're looking to pick up the manga, I highly recommend going the Eternal Editions route. It's a much larger format with higher quality paper. Sailor Moon can get wordy at times, and I don't have the best eyesight, so I know I was struggling reading all the text bubbles in these standard volumes. Next is my Tokyo Ghoul box set. Really good read, but I don't know if I should pick up the re-box set. I don't know. Moving on to the shelves on the stand. First up, we have Biomega volumes 1 through 6, a really interesting cyberpunk manga by Satomu Nihei. It's essentially about a virus that is turning people into zombies. It has some really interesting characters like this grizzly bear on the cover of volume 2. It's a really short read with some great art, and I definitely need to read more Nihei. And I'm thinking Blom is the next move for me. Next up, Yotsuba volumes 1 through 12, a really wholesome comedy manga about a girl who moves into a new neighborhood with her dad. She's always getting into some really funny situations, and it's honestly a great read for whenever you need a palate cleanser between series or when you need to get a boost of serotonin. Then we have Scumbag Loser. It's about a guy who is one of the biggest losers in class and in order to climb up the social ranks he makes up a fake girlfriend however it turns out that the next day she shows up as a transfer student but that's not all it actually turns out that this girl is dead next to that is neo parasite m which is a collection of short stories from various mangaka and their own interpretations of the world of parasite this is actually not manga this is a DVD box set for Shuffle. I love the anime and this set looked really cool. If you haven't seen the anime, it's basically a harem romance with a little bit of everything, comedy, drama, and the guy actually ends up with someone at the end, which is, which is nice. Moving on to the next shelf down, we have Chobits in the Omnibus Editions Complete. I'm not a fan of omnibuses that are essentially bricks, but at the time, these were the only option. Now there's a beautiful anniversary hardcover edition that maybe I'll upgrade to someday. The Chobits is so cute, I really enjoyed the anime and manga. I have Prison School Volumes 1-3, through 3. I love the anime, it's wild, and I'm excited to read the manga. I know that the ending isn't everyone's favorite. But I'll see. Right next to that, I have Raw Hero, volumes 1 through 6 complete. This was so enjoyable, even if the ending wasn't the greatest. Hiromoto's art and writing was great. This was a page turner, and I was on the edge of my seat for the majority of my read through. 
Now we move on to my Kyoko Kozaki section. First up, we have Pink. This follows a girl who is an office worker by day and an escort by night. She works these jobs to be able to feed her pet crocodile named Croc. I know, an awesome name. This manga is fantastic and has a great message overall. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to give away too much, but I highly recommend checking this one out, along with Okazaki's other work, Helter Skelter Fashion Unfriendly which is about the Japanese modeling and fashion industry and how it can slowly deteriorate someone from the inside out. Both of these are great. I highly recommend you check them out. Moving on, I have A Man and His Cat, volumes one through three. This is such a cute, fluffy, wholesome series, but honestly, I don't know if I'm going to keep collecting this. Next to that, I have Not Simple by Natsume Ono. This is a high contender for being one of my favorite one-shot that I've read so far. This was such an emotional ride. I don't want to say too much, but if you want a beautifully written tragedy type manga, I highly recommend this one. I have volume one of Donuts Under a Crescent Moon. This is the only GL manga in my collection so far, but I will be changing that very soon, hopefully. This was such a cute read. I can't wait to read more of the series. It was also really relatable. Main character struggles coming to terms with her own sexuality. Next to that, we have Moo or MW as stylized here, which is my first Tezuka manga. This was a really interesting read that follows a criminal and a priest who both share a bond by their past. Without giving too much away, I definitely need to read more Tezuka. Moving on, I have almost all of Slam Dunk. I'm just missing 19 and 24, as you can see. I've read up until volume 16 or 17, thinking that the volumes I was missing wouldn't be out of stock for so long. I'll probably have to reread the series when I have my set complete. From what I've read, this is an enjoyable read. I love the team. I love the excitement. I think Sakuragi is a great protagonist. So far, really fun. I really want to get into Inoue's other works, thinking I'm probably going to read real after this. I have Vinland Saga volumes 1 through 8 and volume 10. Vinland Saga is an amazing historical Viking manga with fantastic art, a masterfully written protagonist, solid world building. Honestly, I could gush over Vinland Saga all day. Next to that, I have Blue Period, volumes 1 through 6 up to date. I'm really enjoying this series. We follow our main protagonist, Yaguchi, who really doesn't have much direction in life until he discovers his passion for art. The character struggles are all very relatable, whether you're an artist or not. Really great stuff so far. To start this shelf off, I have some random items on here. I have volume one of Mail, one and eight of MPD Psycho, and a random PS2 copy of Resident Evil 4. Moving on, I have Animal Land, volumes one through 14 complete by Makoto Raiku, who is the creator of Zatch Bell. This is such an amazing manga. The story is about a tanuki who finds an abandoned human baby and raises it as her own. The baby possesses the ability to speak with all kinds of animals, and he wants the animals of animal land to coexist with one another. This story has it all in my opinion, emotional and funny moments, great action, and solid art. The ending was rushed and all over the place, but I still highly recommend you check this series out if you can find it. Next, I have volumes 1 through 11 complete of The Flowers of Evil by Shuzo Shimi. I love the spines of the singles and the Amis are really nice too. Great series overall. Also have volumes one through eight of Blood on the Tracks. Amazing read, so messed up. Very suspenseful, just overall masterful writing. I've read up to volume seven, I believe. Now I'm just gonna let the volumes pile up since Oshimi's works are fast reads. Here's a random volume 34 of Attack on Titan the Kinokuniya variant that came with the really cool Skishi artboard. You'll see that on my other shelf. More random stuff, I have Paprika by Satoshi Kone, Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Gods Blu-ray, Claymore Blu-ray, 
volume one of the Cromarty High School DVDs and Trigun DVDs. Moving down, I have Food Wars volumes 1 through 16. I haven't read this series in a while, but I think I left off on volume 9 when I was reading it. I really remember enjoying this manga, honestly. I know a lot of people have mixed reviews on it, but it's fun to me. Volumes 1 and 2 of the Resident Evil manga. I'm a huge fan of the franchise. Honestly, the good games, the bad games, I'll play them. I've heard the manga isn't very good, though. Moroshimi, I have volumes 1 through 8 of Inside Mari. I haven't read this series yet. I'm gonna wait for the last volume to come out and just binge it. I also have Shino Can't Say Her Name. Solid one-shot in my opinion. Definitely not his best or worst work, but it was nice to see something more personal from him. I have Grand Blue Dreaming, volumes 1 through 13. I know I'm a little behind with the releases, but this is such a hilarious manga. Probably the funniest I've read so far. College kids drinking, getting into some stupid situations, and to top it off, they scuba dive. I like to say it has American Pie vibes, but this manga's actually good. Moving down, I have Japan by Bjornsson and Kentaro Mura. This doesn't have the best reviews, but I personally liked it. Also, it was pretty cool seeing Mira's early work. A few of the characters are practically berserk characters too. Giganto Maxia by Mira is just mindless violence, a fun one shot overall. Moving on, I have Noragami Volumes 1-5. through 5. I really enjoyed the anime adaptation and what I've read from the manga so far. Definitely need to read more. Honestly, I can say if you like Jujutsu Kaisen, I think you'd really enjoy Noragami, so definitely check it out. Parasite Volumes 1-8 through 8, Complete, one of my favorite manga of all time. I am eagerly awaiting the full color editions. I can't imagine how amazing of an experience that would be, especially revisiting the series. Highly recommend you guys jump on those editions when they come out. Next up, I have Cross Game, Volumes 1, 2, 4, and 5. I've read the first two and so far pretty interesting. I think we're getting more into the baseball aspect as the manga progresses, so that's nice. This last section I call my Forbidden Corner. I have Lychee Light Club by Usumaru Furia and Super Dimensional Love Gun by Shintaro Kago. Not for the faint of heart, <laughs> lots, and I mean lots of potentially triggering or upsetting stuff going on in these series. And a random volume one of the Spice and Wolf light novel, I just didn't know where to put it. Lastly, I have Dead Man Wonderland volumes one through 13 complete, floating around since I'm trying to find a spot for it. I liked Dead Man Wonderland, but I don't think I'll reread it anytime soon. Moving on to the only full-size shelf I own, on the very top I have Fist of the North Star Volumes 1-3. through three. The story follows our main protagonist, Kenshiro, who protects the defenseless from gangs and other evils in this post-apocalyptic world. I'm really enjoying this manga so far. Volume 4 came out not too long ago, so I need to pick that up soon. Next to that, of course, is my JoJo's Bizarre Adventure collection. I have Part 1, Phantom Blood, Volumes 1-3, through three, complete. Part 2, Battle Tendency 1-4, through four, complete. Part 3, Stardust Crusaders 1-4 through four, and 6-10. through ten. Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable 1-8. through eight. And Part 5, Golden Wind, Volumes 1 and 2. JoJo's is becoming one of my favorite series of all time. These hardcovers are absolutely beautiful. I just love the spines, especially from parts four and five. I think they just look really clean on the shelf. I definitely want to add figures and other merch to this shelf soon and make a really cute JoJo shrine. I have Solonin, a great one-shot manga that tackles themes of adulthood, such as finding a career you're passionate about, dealing and coping with failures and losses, just to name a few. An entry I really recommend to new readers of Asano. Next to that, I have my favorite manga of all time, Goodnight Pun Pun. But it's simply a coming-of-age story where we follow the protagonist, this cute little bird creature, from childhood to adulthood and all of the burdens he must endure and obstacles he must face. This manga deals with some heavy themes. Also, I don't recommend this if you're looking to just see what is so messed up about it. I just think that this series offers a lot more than just its edginess.
I have 20th Century Boys Volumes 1 through 12 and 21st Century Boys Complete. I'm currently reading through this and I am loving this series. It's an amazing series so far. Personally, I believe you should go into this series with as little information as possible to maximize your enjoyment. So I won't be saying much, but I really need to read more Naoki Urasawa after this. Then I have some random volumes of Zatchbo guidebooks in Japanese. I have Record of Ragnarok Volumes 1 and 2. I'm really starting to enjoy this series. This is a tournament manga where the gods and the world's strongest humans fight and the outcome will decide the fate of humanity. Volume 1 started off pretty cool, but Volume 2 is where things start to get really fun. Moving on, I have Fire Punch Volume 1 by Tatsuki Fujimoto. I've read this volume and all I can say is that this was interesting to say the least. Volume 1 of Wave Listen to Me by Hiroaki Samura, which I haven't read yet. Moving on, I have What a Wonderful World, Volumes 1 and 2 Complete. This is a series of short slice of life stories that vary in themes and just overall intensity. Some are rather short and simple and others have a bit more depth to them. Pretty interesting read if you're already a big fan of Asuno. Moving on, I have Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction, Volume 2 in English, and I have Volumes 1 and 2 in Japanese. I bought the Japanese ones when the series first started, not knowing it would get an English release. I've only read the first two volumes a while ago, so I don't remember much, but I do remember enjoying what I did read. Very excited to revisit and continue this series. Next to that, I have A Girl on the Shore, a really controversial title in Asuno's impressive catalog. Personally, this one was just not for me. Then I have Nijigahara Holograph, a one-shot with a very beautiful English release by Fantagraphic Books, by the way. This is another dark psychological one following the lives of elementary students into adulthood after a tragic event that still weighs heavily on their lives. It can be a bit confusing of a read as it deals with multiple characters and their timelines, but overall, this was a fantastic read with some masterful writing for it being just a single one-shot. I also have The Boxman. This was such a trip of a manga. I really enjoyed the weird art, characters, and overall direction this took. This follows a man on a scooter, a cat creature, and a strange box. If you like trippy stuff, you'd definitely enjoy this one. Moving on to the next shelf down, which is double stacked as you can see. Starting from the back, I have Inubaka Crazy for Dogs Volumes 1-17. through 17 technically a complete English run. Unfortunately, Viz cancelled this series at its 17th volume. This is such a cute romantic comedy revolving around dogs and dog lovers. The way the dogs are illustrated are just really cute. I love animals, so this was a must read for me. Next to that, I have Jocko the Galactic Patrolman by Akira Toriyama. This story is set before the events of Dragon Ball and does feature and reference some characters from the mainline series, but this is just Overall, a neat little spin-off fans of Dragon Ball and Toriyama would really enjoy. I have Ultimo Volumes 1 through 9, a manga by Stan Lee and creator of Shaman King Hiroyuki Takei. I believe I've read up to Volume 5 or 6, and it was an interesting story. The premise is about a scientist who is practically just Stan Lee that creates these childlike mech creatures one who is ultimate good and the other being ultimate evil. Then I have Kaiji Volumes 1 and 2, which I have not read yet. I also have the Oshimi one-shots Waltz and Miss Kusakabe. These were a little strange, but interesting, and I'm just overall really happy to have them in my collection. Here we have a Spanish Volume 1 of Kingdom. This was a solid first volume, which was really exciting, and I can't wait to read more. I plan to get the remaining volumes that are out soon. Next up, Gigant by Hiroya Oku, volumes 1 and 2. This was my first work by this mangaka. I am thoroughly entertained so far. This manga follows a high schooler who meets his favorite adult film star, Papago, who has this strange device implanted in her arm by a strange man. I have volumes 1 through 10 of Chainsaw Man up to date with just one more volume left until the series wraps up in English. I love Chainsaw Man. This is such a great series and I can't wait for part 2 of the manga and the anime that will be airing soon. Another really popular series, Jujutsu Kaisen. I have volumes 0 through 12. I've enjoyed what I've read so far. 
which is basically where season one of the anime leaves off around volume eight. I have some random volumes of Yu Yu Hakusho, volumes 1, 5, 6, and 9. I love the Yu Yu Hakusho anime, and as you can probably tell, Kurama is my favorite character. Moving down to the next shelf, I have Toriko 1 through 43 complete. Volume 16 is a Spanish copy, so I did cheat a little bit, but I'm currently reading through this, and so far, this has been one of the most enjoyable reads for me this year. The world building is top notch, the art is solid, and the action and abilities are very unique. Also, some of the best covers, without a doubt, in my collection. I have One Punch Man volumes 1 through 23 up to date. This is also one of my favorite ongoing series. The art is some of my favorite of all time, and almost every character in this series is just so good looking. Next to that, I have Volume 1 of Nana. I won't say too much because I highly recommend just going into the series blind once again, but I will say that this is one of the most well-written and relatable series I've ever had the pleasure to experience. The characters are eerily realistic and human in terms of the decisions that they make. Moving down to the bottom shelf, I have of course my Berserk Deluxe Editions. I have Volumes 1 through 9. 10 is out, but I always wait till they're like 30 bucks a pop to pick them up. There's nothing I can really say about Berserk that your favorite manga tuber hasn't said already, but it's a fantastic series with amazing art, storytelling, and well-written characters. Next to that, I have Berserk Singles, Volumes 1 and 2, Manga Theater by Akira Toriyama, which is a collection of one-shots and short stories, a lot of which actually inspired a lot of Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump. Next to that, I have Uzumaki by Junji Ito, my first and only Ito work so far. I'm looking forward to reading more of his manga. I have the Paradise Kiss Brick. I haven't read this yet, but I'm terrified that when I do read it, I'll crack the spine, but I know I'll love the series and it'll probably break my heart and send me through a depression, but I'm ready. Then I have Cutie Honey by Gonagai. This was amusing, a manga that follows an android named Honey that possesses an ability that an evil organization is after. It's almost like a Monster of the Week type series. I really need to read more of Gonagai's other works as well. Abra by Satomu Nihei. This was an interesting read. Another dystopian series where these really interesting looking creatures pose a threat to humanity. The art is incredible, as to be expected by Nihei. Next, I have Ping Pong by Tayo Matsumoto. This is such an incredible series, seeing the characters experience the sport of ping pong through their own unique set of lenses is fantastic. Everyone develops in their own unique ways and it's just all brilliant. I can't recommend this series enough. The anime is also in my top 5 anime of all time. Masaki Yuasa just doesn't miss. I have Helsing in the Deluxe Editions Volumes 1-3 through three complete. This was a cool read. The manga is all about violence, the Catholic Church, Nazis, vampires, and the badass we all know and love, Alucard. I also have the Blade of the Immortal Deluxes as well. I have volumes one through four. I've read volume one, which is obviously three of the singles, and so far, interesting. I'm not really captivated by the story yet, but the art is great and the concept is interesting. Next up, probably my grail book, my Spice and Wolf Collector's Edition, which is beautiful. Spice and Wolf is one of my favorite series of all time, and of course, I had to have this edition when it came back in stock. And then I'll give you guys a quick little overview of my box of random goodies. This is where I keep my art books and oddly shaped manga and other things.
But yeah, that's my manga collection video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and you can go ahead and follow me at my Instagram or TikTok at Yoma Manga. I'd really appreciate it. I have some more videos coming out. Thanks for watching.